Hey guys, welcome back to Sweet Viver. Today we have a roadshow meetup, a Pimax roadshow in Florida, here in uh, Orlando, very close to Orlando. It's uh, uh, not as busy yet because we just started off today. Let's let's go in. So what is a roadshow really? We're, we're doing like private meetups for around 50, 60 people during a whole day from 10 in the morning until like 8 in the evening. And we're asking them impressions about the 8KX, the 8K Plus, the 5K Super and also the Artisan. And uh, we have uh, set up with four computers in here. If my camera man can just, camera lady by the way, it's Chen from Pimax, which is recording this right now. We have four setups here with four computers, four headsets running at the same time. Uh, right now we only have three guests because it's still early. And uh, we're using three 8K Xs, uh, one 5K Super and one uh, Artisan which is over there, which is still not set up even, but nobody has asked for the Artisan yet to try it. But anyway. It's going really good. We are uh, testing some simulators, mainly the uh, Airfly FS2 flight simulator, also DCS World or Digital Combat Simulator. Some, uh, some of the visitors have tested the Assetto Corsa simulator, uh, the racing simulator. We have tried uh, also Boneworks, for example, and Pavlov with VRSS now. The new uh, feature from NVIDIA, which enhances the, well, it removes the jaggedness in games. It's basically a super sampling or anti-aliasing, really, uh, which doesn't require that much of your GPU. So, uh, yes, let's go over here and we're going to see if we can get some impressions here, actually. The, the beauty of having a meetup like this or a roadshow is that you're not so crowded. You get like a couple of people uh, at a time just here. They got the time to try out the headsets. They can try several games. They can just play around with the headsets for on their own and make their own impression without rushing. So we have time slots for everyone here uh, during the whole day. And we have uh, like around 55 or something, almost 60 people. There are actually some people, there were actually some people here without even being uh, registered for the show today. And if you have a chance, check out in the forums on the PimaxVR.com in our community. Uh, there's still a chance you may uh, be able to just jump in here. There's an address with everything where the roadshow is going on. It's going to be uh, running all day until 8 p.m. tonight. So, yes, um, here's one of our visitors. Hi, sir. What's your name? Edwin. Hi, nice to meet you, Edwin. Uh, where are you playing? Me, I'm playing Aerofly. Right? I believe that's the call. that's what's called. Um, man, I can't believe how clean it looks. Tell me about it. Uh, you're running on an 8K X right now. Yes. Uh, it's uh, Airfly FS2. Mm -hmm. We are running this in a native uh, 4K resolution, of course. Uh, almost maximum details in games. Uh, this is an RTX 2080 Ti computer, so it, it is not overclocked though. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to maintain a full frame rate, of course, so we have not maxed out the game, but it's beautiful enough, I guess. Let me know about it. Um, I used to have issues with my Odyssey Plus regarding like clarity-wise. One, The main thing was my IPD adjustment. I have adjusted this completely and everything looks like completely clean. Um, and also I have no stuttering when I look around the cockpit and I could see everything pretty much. I'm, s I'm still shocked how clean it looks compared to my other headsets that I used to have. Wow, yeah, it looks really clean. How about the field of view? Uh, do you feel that it increases the immersion? Does it add anything into a simulator like this? Oh, absolutely. It feels like I'm not looking through like binoculars anymore or like a little microscope. It actually feels open it feels it feels good you know it feels like you're looking at a screen and not a little hole you know yeah it feels nice really nice cool uh distortion there's a lot of people talking about distortion in the edges of the screens like in the peripheral vision what what do you think do you feel that no there's absolutely no distortion now i don't see anything nope Cool. It all depends on, I mean, it's different from person right. to person. Some people might have more problems because, I mean, some people use glasses. Uh, there are different head shapes and face shapes, of course. But, but yeah, uh, so no distortion. That's great. How about the comfort? Tell the, me about the comfort. Yeah, I was about to tell you that the headset, I thought it would be heavier than I thought it was going to be. It actually feels lighter and it feels comfortable in the head, especially the back piece. 
it, it just sits well in your head. Um, yeah, I could play probably this for hours. It feels really nice. One of my main issues, it was with VR. I used to have the Vive and the Odyssey Plus. It was clarity for my simulations. Um, this this is amazing. This is probably what we're looking for, for the, especially for a new flight simulator that's coming out. Oh yeah, the Microsoft Flight Simulator, of course. Yeah, that's my main thing. That's why I'm shopping around. Oh, sorry, <laughs> shopping sorry. around and see. But yeah, this feels great. Yeah, this is actually quite interesting because you're mentioning the Odyssey Plus. Uh, not many people have the Odyssey Plus, as far as I know. And I don't know if we ever covered a, a comparison between the 8KX and the Odyssey Plus. Uh, tell me more about the difference between the Odyssey Plus and the 8KX. The Odyssey Plus felt like it was clear enough but it needed a little extra clarity wise um, this feels like it gave you that and one of the main issues was no IPD adjustment which made me really dizzy and it was just unplayable for an hour or two it was just I don't know it was maybe my eyes but it felt like that after fixing this one yeah it feels it feels great I still can't believe how clear it looks hmm. so can you read all the text and all those small buttons oh, yeah. and knobs yeah, I don't have to lean forward anymore. I could just see, oh, sorry, you're there. I, I, <laughs> sorry, yeah. I don't have to lean to see the, you know, FMC or anything like that. I could just see everything. Yeah, even the head panel. Yeah, it's, it's clear. It's really clear. Do you have any sound uh, from the earphones right now? Yes. I think they're a little low right now, but yes, I could. I could, I could, I could probably increase it for you if you want to. Uh, let's see if, if you can feel any difference. There you go. How do you feel about the sound, really? Yeah, it sounds good. I like that I could hear outside as well. Um, yeah, it sounds really good. Are you guys going to be able to um, have like a module to come down on the ear as well, or just it's going to be like this? Yes, there's going to be a modular uh, extra add-on, which is called Deluxe uh, uh, version of the head, uh, head, uh, head strap uh, or Deluxe audio which will be available for $99 extra that you can clip on and just uh, use them on air. So it's going to be more like, let's say, the del uh, deluxe audio strap of the HTC Vive or the Vive Pro, for example. Okay. Yeah, yeah that would be great. But some people are saying that the, uh, the audio is weak. That is really not like immersive. Uh, what do you feel, feel about that? Um, I, I feel like it depends if you have a lot of people playing in the room, you might ha want to have it like this so you could hear each other playing and conversating. But yeah, I could see why maybe they might be saying that. If you want to feel immersive, you might want to have something that actually covers the external sounds and, you know, put you in the game. But yeah, other than that, it sounds good. Oh, I'm about to crash. About screen door effect, uh, I mean, you have an Odyssey Plus which has quite a low or a very low screen door effect. What's the difference here? It, I don't, I mean, minimum, I would say l extremely minimum. There's, I'm, I'm looking far into the horizon and there's really, yeah, the clarity just, it's, 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 it's wow, it's, it's pretty insane actually. So, uh, so, I mean, people are always afraid when it comes to VR, it's like there is a screen, a screen door pattern or a pixel pattern around the whole screen. Oh, no, that that's gone. Sorry? That's gone. That's absolutely gone. I don't see any of that. Yeah, there's no screen door effects here. Mm -mm. Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the game for a moment. I'm going to run to the other side and check out. We actually had a guy uh, from the military here. Uh, they were running like military training. He just left. So unfortunately, I couldn't do an interview with him. But he was super excited about the 8KX and he's going to order it right away. Uh, they have like a big um, convention or something going on for some kind of military training. <coughs> he actually works together with Fly Inside. They were using the Fly Inside flight simulator and they're using it for some military training. It's the US Air Force, I think it is, or US, yeah, there's US Army, whatever it's called. And he was also super impressed about the image quality. So, I mean, it feels like most people do agree about, about the clarity and the sharpness, especially for simulators, but also all the games as well. High refresh rate. We have our 5K super. That's a, that can refresh at 180 hertz.
Hi, Kevin. Hello. Hi. I think I'm being I think I'm being filmed somehow. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. so we're doing the first film. It's early in the morning still. Indeed. So I mean, in the uh, we've yeah, had, in the, we've had a fair amount of people here already. Yeah, we got a little bit late, so we missed a few uh, yeah. guys here. Yeah. I wanted to do some more impression, but there's going to be more <laughs> videos during the day here. Yep. So uh, guys, come in here. Uh -oh. <laughs> What's your name? Burke. Burke. Hi, Burke. Uh, Juan Pablo. Juan Paulo. Got dragged in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never yeah, I, I never even asked about that. But but yeah, hopefully that's okay, right? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank so uh, uh, let me know about the uh, headsets you have tried here so far. No, he first yeah. Yep. Well, it was an unbelievable experience for me because I am hobbyist for the flight simulators and also I'm a PhD student in computer science. Oh, wow. So I'm working on computer graphics, uh, some virtual reality simulators. So this headset is like, I cannot explain, uh, I cannot express my feelings about it by words because it was realistic, but you cannot just explain that realism by words because it is, uh, I believe it will be something that people uh, will use and will just take the other headsets in the you know, market uh, in manner of time, but it will take place of them, I believe. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, what headsets do you use at the moment? Have you tried any other VR headsets so far? Well, yeah, uh, I tried the Oculus Rift, uh, the HTC Vive. Uh, so we were working on those. We have all those uh, headsets uh, in our labs. Uh, so we have some uh, multiple projects with them. Uh, but this one has really great quality and taste. So I think this will be better if we just consider and use it for the next projects or something. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, so tell me more about the sharpness itself, because there are some people uh, asking, can I really read the gauges? Uh, I mean, in the in the cockpits. Yeah. You were flying the 747 before, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was uh, on my uh, on my screen, not the headset. On my screen, when I'm just flying over, like uh, on my personal computer, it was like a regular game, you know, because it wasn't the full, not full HD. It wasn't a 4K or 8K something, but here, you can even just look uh, on the ground and it will be, you can see all the details or all the clouds as well. And also that gauges, all the text, all the, you can also feel everything. You can just uh, take the control of uh, all the plane. So everything was perfectly clear uh, for this case. So it, it is really good. It is really good. Cool. Uh, how about the Comfort? The new strap is not the final version yet. Mm -hmm. It's still uh, like an, how do you say, like a release candidate sample. We still do some more adjustments uh, regarding the sound and also regarding these, those hinges which are, which are yeah. holding together the strap together with the headsets. Mm -hmm. because, because we had some problems because of some plastic parts. Now we're going to replace them to metallic parts. But in, in general, how about the comfort well, wearing this one? It, it was comfortable. It was relaxed. When you just adjust, it wasn't like, a, um, how can I say that? It was, it was really uh, great uh, when you just had uh, take this uh, on your head so uh, it wasn't like uh, painful it wasn't like something bad so it was just a great comfortable uh, thing you can just adjust and uh, immediately go into the game and about the sound did you hear sound when you were playing yeah it was really sick uh, because you will hear uh, is it 360 or something I yes it's like spatial 360 yeah. sound yeah. so it was more realistic because we are in the uh, place that we can see all around uh, of the thing and also you have to have that sound while we are just playing or doing something else so it w it was really great it is really great Cool. Have you tried the, the 5K Super yet? Uh, the one with the 180 hertz refresh rate? I don't think so, no. Okay, we're going to try that later. Okay. So, uh, one more thing, screen door effect. Do you see any screen door effect on the 8KX? Like the pixel pattern when you're looking around? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, like pixelation? Yeah, pixelation. Do you no, see no, no, no. It was really crystal, crystal clear <laughs> thing. So therefore, this is the amazing part for me. Yeah. Usually when I play a game, I choose a performance mode because my PC is not that quite, you know, uh, powerful. But here uh, I have that uh, PC and I have that headset. So the quality was really great. Therefore, there isn't any pixelation. There isn't anything that like that. So it is yeah. cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. One more question. Sure. Uh, there is like distor some people are talking about distortion in the peripheral vision, like in the 
edges of the screens. Do mm -hmm. you see that? Like something is like stretched or something like bent? If the image is like distorted? I don't think so. We were also talking about this parallel projection as well with the angles the thing. So I think you guys already solved these kind of issues here. So yeah, I yeah. <laughs> almost perfect. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect ever because it's an optical yeah. problem, of course. But did you did you experience any kind of uh, N not too much, I guess. While I was flying, I was just trying to look on the gr to the ground, but it wasn't like that uh, bad. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy playing a little bit more if you want sure. to. Thank you. I want to talk to Liam, one of our guys here who are uh, who is actually hosting the computers for today. Hi, Liam. How are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Dauntless IT Solutions, right? That's your company. Yep. Uh, tell me about it. Uh, so we started in 2011 as just, you know, a normal uh, PC for consumers. You know, you just build a gaming PC or work PC. Um, then we moved into more business solutions. So we work with businesses as well. We do uh, managed service. We do uh, SLC customers. Um, but we still do the uh, the gaming PC side. So we... Uh, if there's just an individual who wants a gaming PC for VR, for just regular games, for anything, even office work, we can do a custom build for them. And uh, we also have our, our pre-built models, this one right here. Let, let's, have a, let's have a look at this computer over here. Uh, if my camera can just record it a little bit yeah. here. <laughs> so, so tell me about this PC specifically. This is our future-proofed PC. Uh, I actually built this one um, not too long ago, uh, I think last week. And here we're using a, a Cooler Master high airflow case with two uh, 200 or yeah two 200 millimeter fans in the front. Uh, the case has RGB, but the the main thing that I was you know trying to go for with this design of this build was the airflow. So uh, in the front there's a mesh. Yeah. The mesh allows the yeah. air to pass through you know unrestricted. Yeah, and there's um, some huge fans over here in the yeah. front. Yeah, the, the huge fans, they spin slower, but the advantage of that is uh, you move more air and it's quieter while you're not spinning the fans as fast. Yeah. Um, as well, uh, the everything in this case is air-cooled, so the, the entire point of this build is to have enough airflow to cool both the CPU and the GPU correctly. So the top fan will be mostly cooling the or feeding the air to the CPU. The bottom fan will be feeding the air to the GPU and the hard drives. Yeah, and it's basically a high-end PC. It's an RTX 2080 Ti. It was an Intel i9. You said i9, yep. and we also have a configuration with the Ryzen 9 yeah. uh, 3900X. So AMD. if you yeah. if you want more cores, or if you're just a Team Red fan, you can go for the AMD version. Uh, the i9 version is excellent as well. You'll get higher clock speeds with that, uh, slightly better single core performance. So, whatever the customer wants. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. So you so you can basically build this these computers on demand, right? Uh, yes. So the uh, this computer and that computer are both of our pre-built models. Yeah. Uh, so whenever someone buys one, we just rebuild it, keep it in stock, and uh, yeah. You can look at this one. Here's here. the other one with the AMD uh, processor, right? Yep. So this is our enthusiast model. It's a bit smaller. Uh, we used a micro ATX case in this oh. uh, in this build specifically. Yeah, I love the size of it. I mean, it looks portable almost. Yeah. I would say. <laughs> yeah, and it it still has amazing specs. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, AMD 3600. Um, RTX 2070 Super, and actually this case is also optimized for airflow, so the front of it is uh, still a mesh front. It allows unrestricted airflow to the GPU and CPU, um, so you won't run into any issues with the cooling. Yeah, and you could uh, squeeze in like an RTX 2080 Ti here in as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> cool. Wow, uh, I'm really happy and I'm really thankful that you were able to bring these computers for us today for this event. 
Uh, I mean, I don't know how we would have managed it otherwise. <laughs> so thank you so much for bringing them here, for showing them off. And um, guys, if you, want, if you want to check out these computers, if you want to buy one, check out Dauntless IT Solutions, right? Yep, and you can also go to our website, dauntlesscomputers.com. Uh, we mostly serve the Central Florida area, but if you're outside the area, we can also ship it to you. If you're a business, we can do your IT. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Cool. So let's move on to the next thing, the VR headsets we have here. The, uh, the Pimax 8KX, uh, the Pimax 5K Super, which you also tested. Uh, uh, let me know, you are a frequent uh, uh, Valve Index user, right? And you're playing a lot of Beat Saber also. Yes. <laughs> let, me, let me know your first impressions about the 8KX. You tried it yesterday while we were setting up those computers. Let me know what you think. So when, uh, when we were testing the headset, the 8KX was running in its full resolution mode where it's uh, 4K per eye, uh, each panel, uh, there's a panel for each eye. Um, and at that mode, it runs at 75 hertz. I, pre uh, I previously tried the uh, Rift S, which ran at 80 hertz. And 75 and 80 hertz to me feel about the same. Uh, but when you go to the, I think you called it the upscale mode? Yes, yes. Uh, the upscale mode switches it to 90 hertz, so it actually felt a lot more like the original Rift, which ran at 90 hertz for me. Um, of course, the higher refresh rate, the better. And you guys said you are going to do um, 120 hertz? Yes, actually is already available, but for some, for some reason we don't have the firmware over here. It's actually supporting 120 hertz. Uh, in upscale mode uh, on the 8KX and 110 hertz on the if, uh, 8K Plus, which is upscale all the time, of right. course, because it's using the same upscale. So, so the difference is uh, between, let's say, 90 and 75. Yeah, so the difference between 90 hertz and 75 hertz is much greater than 90 and 120, despite it being a larger uh, hertz difference. You know, it's refreshing more per second at 120 your brain just kind of notices it more at the lower end. So if you had a headset with 60 hertz, for a lot of people that actually hurts their eyes, 75 hertz, that's like where it starts to become comfortable. Like I know the, uh, the Oculus Quest uses 72 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's probably like, I would probably say that's the bare minimum, but for faster games, like, you know, any type of shooter games, Onward, Pavlov, Beat Saber especially, uh, fast games, the refresh rate matters a lot more. Um, and the higher you go, you do see diminishing returns, but uh, there is also a level of comfort that comes with a higher refresh rate. So if you're a person who has uh, issues with sickness in VR, or you think you might get uh, motion sick because you get motion sick in you know your car or a boat, uh, then a higher refresh rate can actually help mitigate that, especially if the game doesn't move you in the virtual world, then uh, the higher refresh rate makes it easier to use the headset for a longer period of time and you won't get as uncomfortable in that amount of time. Hmm. And I saw you, Liam, yesterday, you, you were an expert on Beat Saber. I, this guy is really playing like those most crazy levels and he's like, and he rarely misses anything. That's super impressive, I think. And you, when you tried the 8KX with 90 hertz, it felt much better right away, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, if you have a higher refresh rate, uh, the movement mapped to the controllers is more one-to-one -one or more real life. When you're playing it at a lower refresh rate, you almost have to compensate for the lower refresh rate. Uh, I don't know how you describe it. It's kind of like if you uh, there's a block coming at you and you have to slash it. If it's lo uh, lower refresh rate, then you kind of have to follow through with that slash a bit earlier on. Yeah. Uh, but it becomes kind of automatic. You just got to get used to it, basically. Yeah. yeah. So as I, I mean, this is one of the beauties with the 8KX. You can run it in 75 hertz and native mode, let's say for simulators, for racing games, for maybe some casual gaming and such, but if you want to do those super fast games like Beat Saber can be on those expert levels, it's better to just switch it up to the upscale mode and then you can run it up to 120 hertz uh, or 100. 
20 frames per second. Right. But you also tried the 5K Super uh, this morning, I remember, in which was running in 160 hertz. The maximum refresh rate is 180, uh, but which we switched it to 160 just because you get a larger field of view when you're running it in 160. The 180 mode is more like, like let's say, a uh, Vive Pro. Uh, no, uh, I would say like Valve Index uh, field of view. So. Uh, what was the difference? How, how do you feel when you try the 5K Super with the 160 hertz in Beat Saber? Well, like I said, when you get up to the higher refresh rates, you start to see diminishing returns. It did feel smoother than my Valve Index running at 144, um, but the difference is much smaller than going from 75 to 90, like I said. Um, it, 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 there is a difference for me, someone who plays very fast VR games. For most people, I don't think you're going to notice it too much. But if you're, you know, uh, one of those people on YouTube who just goes crazy on Expert Plus Plus difficulty with uh, Beat Saber, then that will be valuable to you because uh, it's not a placebo. Like there, there is a difference, but that difference only makes a difference when you uh, you're at that crazy skill level yeah yeah like you have for example <laughs> he's super good at this i was super impressed actually <laughs> so uh liam, liam uh, anything more uh, maybe the comfort side i mean you're used to the valve index which has great comfort of course uh how, how about the 8kx and the other headsets uh, what's the difference here is there any difference is it battery is it worse uh, so the head strap design, uh, the new one on these Pimax headsets, uh, it reminds me a lot of the Vive Pro, which I've actually never used the Vive Pro, but just the way it looks, it reminds me of it. Um, it uses the same two um, firm straps on the side and then one Velcro strap at the top, and that's the same design that the original Rift used, the uh, Index uses. And uh, the other design would be the Halo strap that the Rift S uses. I prefer this over the Halo strap, even though the Halo strap is usually easier to adjust and get on your head at first. But I still think this is more comfortable because it puts less uh, pressure and strain on your forehead. With a Halo strap, there's a huge pad on the, the forehead area. And especially with the Rift S, that pad can get very hot. And if you're playing, um, you know, physically intensive games like Beat Saber, then um, that can become an issue where you're, you just overheat. Like, it's not that, it's, uh, that the strap is uncomfortable, it's that it just gets too hot. <laughs> yeah. So, two more questions. Audio. Uh, I mean, when you're playing Beat Saber, it's all about the sound, the, the, I mean, the rhythm. Uh, how do you feel? Is that sound, the spatial sound, which is projecting to your ears, is not the final version? But how do you feel about that right now in Beat Saber when the music is pumping? Uh, is that enough for like for Beat Saber and games like that? So Beat Saber, the the music it just kind of it just fires at you. There's no direction to the Beat Saber music. There is direction to the slashing sound effects that you do when you you know you cut the blocks. Did you hear them? I hear yeah. No? Yeah, um, and actually, you know, if you've ever played Beat Saber before, you know how satisfying it is to, to slash those blocks and feel the vibration and then hear that wonderful chopping noise. Um, but yeah, that was directional for sure. Hmm. Uh, but the music, I, I believe it just plays through both headphones normally. Yeah, yeah uh, of course you won't get the same uh, bass like like on-air headphones it's because you need like a chamber to to get that bass really like the, the deep bass but you, so you're saying that you could play Beat Saber for hours like with this sound or is it like nah I would prefer like on-air uh, headphones well the issue with on-ear headphones is that uh, it's kind of the same issue with the uh, the halo strap that I mentioned um, if you're doing this as a workout, you get very hot, you get very sweaty. Um, like with my Rift S, for example, those, the, the speakers on those were so terrible, I just plugged in my own headphones to use. And the problem with me doing that is once I'm done, the, the headphones are very sweaty and wet and disgusting. <laughs> uh, so definitely an off-ear solution for that application is much more convenient you don't have to clean it it stays away from your your ears uh, and of course you do have to project that sound down into your ears so you do have a loss of quality but 
I think I would take convenience over quality if I was playing Beat Saber specifically, uh, especially with you know the the issues I just mentioned with heat and sweat. Yeah. Uh, one last question: uh, screen door effect and the sharpness. You you play a lot of uh, Valve Index. What's the difference here? Is the difference noticeable or yeah? Tell me about it. Yeah. So I've used uh, the Valve Index, the Rift S, a bunch of different headsets. Uh, the Index. I do not notice the screen door effect on. Um, sometimes you can see the pixel lines, and the, it, it actually has a weird issue where uh, you sometimes see small little red lines, um, but that's just the way that that screen is. Um, you these, mean on the Valve Index? Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, that's just the way that that screen is built. Um, these screens, they were, um, I believe, two times more resolution than the Index. Uh, the 8KX, uh, well, the 8KX is 4K per eye. Uh, yeah, the Index is 1600p. Yeah, 1600p, so it's like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have the exact number in between if it's two times or not, but it's basically like 2.5K versus 4K right. per eye. So the the absence of the screen door effect, I would say, on both headsets is about the same. Uh, the difference you see with this headset is the very fine details in, in some games and applications. So like, uh, I think you mentioned simulators, uh, flight simulator, you can read the very small text on the, the dashboard or the, um, the gauges. Um, in games that have very high quality textures, you can you can get close to those textures and you can see the detail from a further distance than the index. Um, but in terms of screen door effect, neither this headset or the index really uh, has an amount of screen door effect that bothers you. So yeah, if you pixel peep, uh, you're gonna see pixels anywhere, like even on the highest resolution phones. If you really look for those pixels, you'll see them. Uh, you can never make them invisible, really, and especially with jagged edges in games where you, um, unless you use the VRSS that you uh, specifically mentioned. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the screen door effect is not blaring, is what I'm saying. Like, the screen door effect is an annoyance. So, uh, on the Jed 1 headsets, you just had to get used to it. On these, you have to go out of your way to look for pixels. So, th that's the... That, that's what I would think is the um, ideal situation because then uh, you don't have to worry about pixels. Like you're just you're in the virtual world. You're not looking at a screen anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Liam. Thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna be hanging around here the whole day. There's gonna be more people here. A new shift or a time slot is coming here uh, very soon. So uh, thank you so much once again uh, yeah, for being here, for hosting the computers. And we're going to talk more about the computers and everything, and especially the headsets as well, a little bit later. Thanks, and see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.